Hey, I'm the Smoking Chef. Welcome back to my channel and thank you for watching and subscribing. Some of you have asked for another meat recipe. Well, I'm here to oblige. Today, today we have some special friends and I'm going to be cooking. Well, I'm going to give you a hint. Now, what do you think of when you think of veal braised lovingly for two and a half hours in a rich tomato and red white wine sauce until it's ready to fall off the bones. It is so tender. And then garlic mashed potatoes with green beans topped with gremolata, a zesty gremolata. Oh, you're gonna love it. I'm not gonna keep you in suspense. It's also buco. It's a carnival's delight with a wreath of tender, flavorful and succulent veal encircled by a ring of bone that is so full of buttery marrow. But let's get cooking. My mouth is already watering. Let's do the mise en place. And here we have the mise en place. As always, you'll find the portions and the ingredients in the back of the video. But very quickly, we have one large onion in a dice that is a little bit larger than normal, as well as carrots and celery. I don't want them disintegrating. I still want them to have a little bit of a, of a bite. I have some two cups of chicken stock, some garlic, two tablespoons of butter, salt and pepper, tomato paste, a can of tomato. We have the star of the show, which is the osobuco itself. I want to show you how thick they are. You see, they're about two inches, two and a half inches thick. That's what you should be looking for when you look for veal shanks. We have extra virgin olive oil. of red wine, which is full bodied. And here you can use whatever you like, as long as it's full bodied. It's very important that it's either Chianti, Barolo, or like this, a Cabernet Sauvignon. And as far as aromatics, we have, of course, parsley, one lemon that we're gonna use the zest, as well as the juice, thyme, rosemary, two bay leaves, and the chili pepper. And now we are going to salt and pepper and all of these generous amount on both sides of course and the pepper and always pat them down make sure that they stick on there nicely and they will flip the other side this dish is very easy to make and doesn't need too many ingredients to make it as delicious as it is and now we will dredge them in flour that all around oh yeah like that shake off the excess you can serve also buco with saffron risotto or creamy polenta and mashed potatoes today we have chosen mashed potatoes this is one of our favorite recipes my wife and I have had this many times and on many special occasions and I say special occasions because it does take time. Overall time is about three and a half hours from prep to the table. And now we're ready to start. Hey, let's go. Okay, initially we put the heat on high. We wait for a couple of minutes till the pan gets really hot. And then we will add two tablespoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of butter. And it's nice and hot as you can see. And the butter. We want to sear really well. It'll take approximately three to four minutes, maybe a little longer, but we want them nice and golden brown. I'm gonna do this in two batches. Okay, let's flip this one and see. Ah, oh, there we go. See that nice beautiful color, that golden brown? That's what we want. The bone marrow makes this recipe really special and actually luxuriously perfect. Okay, and we take these and put them on the side. Oh, it smells so nice already. You see, they're done 
the sear properly on both sides. And of course, I want to leave some of the fond in there because that's real goodness and we want to impart that in the rest of the meal. So I put another couple tablespoons of olive oil. All right, first we put the onions in. And again, we don't want to caramelize them. We want them to become translucent. So we'll put a little bit of salt in here. And a touch of pepper. Now we add the carrots and the celery. And as you've seen, I cut them a little larger because like I said, I don't want them to be mush by the time we finish this meal. We're gonna be cooking these, like I said, until the onion are translucent. And there's gonna be some development of coloring as well, of course, as in the aroma. I'm gonna put one teaspoon of garlic at this stage and work that around. Mmm, I love the smell of garlic. Also, buco is easy to make. It doesn't need too many ingredients to make it as delicious as it is. Right, and now we're gonna add a half a bottle of red wine, and we want to reduce that about by 75%. We're going to develop depth. I'll put a little more. The heat on high so we can get the reduction going. As you've seen, 75% of the wine has reduced. And now we put in the tomato paste. Two tablespoons of tomato paste. And we want that to caramelize a little bit. So we'll work it in. By the way, you put the wine in first, and then you put the tomato paste, and then you put the tomatoes. Some people do it before, and then the wine does not reduce properly. So you do it in this order, always the wine first. The heat's now back down to medium. The tomato paste has caramelized, and now we will add the tomatoes. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's, let's taste it, you see? Oh yeah, it needs some salt for sure. And some pepper. And another teaspoon of garlic. The chili flakes my two medium-sized bay leaves, thyme, and rosemary. Ah, yeah. The aromatics always going last. Just a little bit of lemon zest, not very much. Just enough to pick it up a little bit. And now we put the chicken stock. And we're gonna reduce the temperature to low. All we want is very low simmer. Very low simmer. We just want it just slightly boiling. Simmer, you'll see the bubbles come up and we'll know it's ready. So there are the bubbles that I'm talking about. So now it's ready. So we can put the shanks back in there. We gotta nestle them in and make sure that they're covered. Beautiful liquid. I'm going to leave them in here for about 20 minutes and then I will put them in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for two and a half hours. And all the juices. Never leave anything behind. There we go. Stop. Now I'm going to cover it. I'm going to leave it like that for 20 minutes and then I will flip them over. Make sure that everything is submerged and put it in the oven. While the osobuku is cooking, obviously the meat will shrink and it will have a tendency to fall away from the bone. There's nothing to be concerned about. You can put it together during your presentation or you can tie a kitchen string around it before it starts cooking. We will also need to pay attention not to overcook the veal shanks. Okay, and now we will prepare the gremolata. I've already had the opportunity to slice some of these things up, but very, very finely. This is parsley, as is the cranberries. 
and we have zest and the garlic. The gremolata is my secret weapon. It's a green sauce, as you know, which is a mixture of finely minced lemon zest, parsley and garlic, some lemon juice is added, extra virgin olive oil, cranberries, and toasted pine nuts. And these, combined, will be sprinkled on top as a garnish on the ossobuco. And they will add a fresh, a bright, and, a, and an earthy taste and texture. Together, they will elevate this ossobuco to something extraordinary. It is two hours out of the oven, and the also buco is done. Take a look at this. Doesn't this look delicious? And now we will serve it. Near the end of the cooking process, the veal shanks may get really tender and the meat starts falling off the bone. Now, don't worry about that, that's normal. Just put it back together on the plate. And it looks really nice and hearty and rustic and trust me, it will be very, very delicious. Veal osobuco. As you can see, the osobuco is fork tender. It's really good. Really, really tender. The gremolata on top. Fantastic. The mashed potatoes are great. Hope you enjoy it. Like, subscribe, and ring that bell. See you next time. Let's hope my guests enjoy it as much as I am enjoying it. Like the chef said, it's very tender, very, very tasty. Thank you very much. No matter how good it looks, it tastes a lot better. Well, isn't that great? Sweetie, you're my best critic. What can I say? I've had it many times. It's your signature dish. Always delicious. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers everybody. Cheers.